Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing discussion of Dead by Daylight, the Emblem System, and June DLC. Normally I have a full script for this kind of conversation that I have, but I just wanted to talk to you guys freely without a script in order to just convey my feelings over the whole situation of Dead by Daylight going through a dry spell right now. So let's start with the Emblem System real fast. Um, it's gonna be a short talk, but we should be able to get through it pretty quick. Um, the Emblem System is something that I've still seen today that a lot of people just really hate it. And I can understand why. We've spent a year and a half getting used to playing the game for points as Survivor and just straight kills for Killer. And then just out of nowhere, we have these ridiculous requirements that don't always make proper sense. Because of this, this causes a bit of discord. When it first came out for me, I absolutely hated it too. But that was only because I didn't understand what I had to do. It made me feel that I could not play the way I wanted to because the way I did resulted in failure. But when I got into diving into the numbers and understanding exactly how this works, it all made sense. And then now that I understand how to win, I can easily bullet point what needs to be done. I need to save people who are down, and I need to get generators when I'm not doing anything else. And with that being said, it makes it really easy to pip. And I understand people are upset with it, but I think we also have to understand that we need the emblem system. We need a defined, clear way to win and lose a clear way so that means they need to be a little more specific on the points and how you get them because when we get blood points it tells us outright how well we're doing we do fantastic we do bad good you know whatever we want to look at it as and uh i can easily say that them not telling us how much a chase is worth them not telling us all this stuff we had to rely on somebody who would pull straight from the game files uh to do that and I was able to get those numbers and make it public on my channel from their reddit post. That's a bit ridiculous when it comes to learning how to win at this game. I can understand people would be upset being you cannot learn this information normally. Also there's like no sense in the gatekeeper emblem for killers particularly because that's not something a killer can do well, that is something that survivors do well. For example, if you do not have Hex Ruin, survivors will force you a bronze or a no emblem simply because, well, there, there's no way a killer is going to stop for survivors from fixing generators unless the survivors just don't do the gener generators. So I think that at that point, the killer really has no control over how well he does in that. If he kills all the survivors before all the generators are completed, he gets a bonus, but that bonus, again, comes down to the survivors. If you're watching this gameplay here, you'll see I have five generators remaining. I get Iridescent Gatekeeper, but that's because I won the game without them getting any generators, and as you, you would tell this game that the survivors were not the uh, strongest, you wouldn't really say that they played very well, or, you know, this was this was just a bad game and they didn't have um, what they needed and in, in this case you know sure iridescent gatekeeper makes sense I did have control kind of I mean I was pretty much fed all the kills I, I didn't work very hard and I didn't even have to use any perks and I still won very well um, but it, it doesn't make sense in a normal game where like they, they actually do get generators because I did have Hex Ruin in this, and I'm sure one of them was looking for the generator, but this is still low rank, too. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing, is I uh, I haven't been playing very much Dead by Daylight since the rank reset, simply because I, I, I don't value ranking up anymore. I don't value the game anymore. I don't find it fun, because ranking up means I'm going to enter back into lobbies that just don't work anymore. And when that happens, I will no longer be able to play the game again. I had to wait till rank reset to get lobbies, and that's terrible. Now, we can blame the rank system for this, you know, emblem system too hard for survivors, ooh. Uh, that shouldn't be the case because there's a system in place for the matchmaking that after waiting about three minutes, you're supposed to be able to connect to any rank, and that's not occurring, so there is a flaw that not queen confirmed that they th there's some sort of technical flaw on their side and they don't know what it is and that was um 
pretty disheartening to hear that they don't currently have a fix for it, and we will likely be waiting till the June update to see anything new come of this or the fix. So now I'm scared to rank up, and playing the game is already a very stressful task as a killer, and way too stress-free as a survivor. In this game, you'll notice as we talk here, um, I'll miss tons of skill checks because I'm so tired. I was going to uh, record and do a couple of talkthroughs, but I just got too tired to script, to do everything, so I'm just talking here, and uh, I like you just see how little of an impact it has. And I really wish this wasn't the case, but it is, and that's... I, I could be as carefree as a survivor and it didn't matter, and even if I did die, I still won because it was really easy to get the emblems after all. That being said, love or hate it? Let me know in the comments section below right now. If you hate it, why? I, I would like to understand the community's stance on this. I know a lot of people agree with me that it's a required thing. Um, it's a bit understanding, and the values we all understand need to be balanced a little better, maybe tweaked a little bit. But um, let me know if you absolutely hate this, you feel it ruined the game for you. Tell me about that. I, I would love to hear uh, from as many people as possible about what's wrong with the emblem system. So with that out of the way, let's look towards the June DLC. This is probably the most exciting part of what's coming up for Dead by Daylight. We have to wait this two month dry spell of nothing to get an update in June, which will change a drastic amount about the game. First, we're gonna get the cosmetics, a shop to earn those cosmetics with playtime, and being able to unlock um, various DLC killers and survivors with playtime. On top of that, we're getting a couple of balance changes, such as the vacuum update, which will prevent survivors from using the pallet vacuum to protect themselves and kind of alter that, while also increasing the height of debris around the area to allow for mind games when it comes to approaching a survivor at a pallet. I've been beating this dead horse for over a year, trying to get the word out that killers really need some love. An entire year that we've just sat here and hoped for balance. We had hoped the Wraith Cube was really gonna make the Wraith a worthwhile killer, but it was a laughable update. We had hoped for all these changes to come out that would help us out, and they never did. And finally, we get some word at the beginning of 2018 that we would get a balance change mid-2018. That's so ridiculous how much we've had to wait. On top of that, we have to sit in this game with currently broken lobbies for two months. I want to love this game. I want to. I have dedicated a lot of my YouTube channel to it. I make guides for it. I focus a lot in this game. And I can't anymore because I literally for two weeks could not play it because being a high rank is punishing. With that, I mean, I would say that the game is dying, but it's not. The numbers on Steam are pretty positive. I mean, it might be dying on Xbox, PS4, I don't have the numbers there, but the numbers on Steam have been around 10,000. It's gone down, they've been losing uh, concurrent players for the last couple of months because this dry spell has just been a bit bland. We're all waiting for the June DLC because it's going to make a drastic difference. But the problem is, will it be enough? The answer to this is no. The June DLC update is so much more focused on the new chapter, the new killer, who is not a ringmaster by the way, that was confirmed that it is definitely not a ringmaster. Um, but the whole new chapter that's coming out, it, it's, it's just going to focus around the new killer, focus on the new mechanic the killer brings in, with the new survivor, the six new perks, the cosmetic update, and maybe the... Um, palette update but they're also doing the hatch update which isn't guaranteed to be done but we'll see a ptb hopefully come out at the beginning of june and we hope to see the june dlc midway of june but uh you know otherwise we're just hanging in there for example on tuesday of this week which was technically when i'm recording this um I was supposed to play with The Geef, an Australian Dead by Daylight killer, a fantastic streamer, check him out if you haven't already, but me and him were to do Curse of Fates Dead by Daylight together all day, and as soon as both me and him are ready and logged in, the Dead by Daylight servers go down and nobody can play Dead by Daylight, and uh, 
we swapped games because we couldn't play. I mean, the service came up about 30 minutes to, to an hour. I wasn't keeping track after we started. And um, I jumped on Hunt Showdown and I had a blast learning that game. I never played it before, and Geef was a veteran of that game, which is currently in beta, and it's a pretty cool first-person shooter. It's another shooter game. I know not too many people have thrilled it, but it's a pretty cool game where you hunt monsters and have to fight for it against other players as well, and you can go in as a team. Me and Geef were a team, and I learned from nothing. I, I got a lot better. I really sucked at it at the start, but grasping that game was so cool. It was really interesting to see the various mechanics there and um, I, I began to realize a problem here. The problem is almost every other game I've picked up in the last two weeks has been very fun and Dead by Daylight is no longer fun. I'm really bummed out to see a game with so much potential be dead to me. In my eyes I can no longer see this game as fun. I find it a chore to play, I find it stressful, too easy as survivor, too difficult as killer, because again, my killer games are strictly dictated by the survivors. What I had shown to you was a game where survivors just literally fell onto the hooks, and then I could possibly show you another game as pig, if I had the time, where the pig, I, I, I got one kill, and everyone else walked. I, actually, I had to quit out of the game because they, they wouldn't leave, and I didn't know where they were at. So I, I had to give up and I had to exit out. I didn't mind that so much uh, that I had to quit, but I, I did mind that like I was powerless to stop them because Pig, for me, is recently prestiged and I do not have the Hex Ruin perk on her. So they pump out the generators. I can't play any killer without Hex Ruin or they just get out and it, it's... It's terrible. It's terrible to require a killer who is already struggling to run a perk which is actually pretty bad because they usually find it in 14 seconds and break it in another 14 seconds. It's a bit ridiculous and it really puts us at a disadvantage. And you know what? I, I know a perfect game that does not have that disadvantage. And that game would be Death Garden. This is a game I saw that a lot of Dead by Daylight players were not too much of a fan of, but a lot of us really did enjoy it. Um, even a good friend of mine, Puppers, which is another Dead by Daylight player, didn't enjoy this so much because of the fact it was more of a shooter than it was, you know, survival horror, which I understand it's not going to be the same game. But my appreciation of Death Garden was it really took asymmetrical gameplay and showed exactly what it's supposed to be. The killer role, is or well the hunter role is the power role and the numerous role really had to work together there was no one person who could carry a team as runner you had to work together and that's the point you are supposed to work as a unit in order to overcome something so very powerful and the hunter is very powerful and if you have a team who that doesn't know what they're doing which to be fair in the closed alpha of this game we really didn't have a clue. Some of us figured it out like I did. Um, you're not supposed to reveal yourself and jump on a capture point really fast, which a lot of people did, which got them killed really fast. We didn't know you could rescue people or run certain perks to uh, make rescues almost guaranteed. Um, nobody figured the strategies out until way later. And then when we finally figured the strategies out, uh, the game was kind of balanced in a way where, yes, five runners could bully the hunter, but it took a lot of skill to worry about a hunter who could outright demolish one person in a matter of seconds. So my favorite part of Death Garden was that the hunter could make an active decision to influence what a runner does and not just what runners do to influence a hunter. And what I mean by this, in Dead by Daylight, the survivors influence the killer simply by Killer finds survivor, killer has to chase survivor. If survivor finds pallet, survivor is safe until survivor drops pallet. Um, now, of course, nurse is one of the very few killers that goes around this idea uh, because the nurse can make active decisions to change how a survivor works. Because if a survivor finds pallet, it doesn't matter. The, the nurse has the decision to blink past the pallet, in front of the pallet, 
right where she's at or inside of the pallet and risk going for that hit. No other killer can really do this, but this kind of decision making influences how the survivor reacts to Nurse. So when I play against Nurse, for example, I no longer have that like looping mentality instead I have the mind game mentality when I know the nurse cannot see me I change my trajectory so that she cannot predict where I'm going and I can try to guess where her blinks are going and adjust my movement so she doesn't catch me and in Death Garden, you get that kind of same mentality. The hunter knows where you're at when you try to make a capture point, but it's up to you and your allies to try to take multiple capture points so the hunter has to make a decision, or the hunter can just make a defensive decision of setting up certain parameters where you could fall for his traps and that would alter how you try to take the points. And Death Garden wasn't even the only game I got to enjoy recently. I got to play Dauntless, which is Monster Hunter, but really light on the content that Monster Hunter has. To be fair, Monster Hunter has had several sequels and multiple things to build up on, but Dauntless is a great online game where you can match up with just about anybody, pick one of five weapons, and go in, fight a giant monster, and try to prove you're the better hunter. Um, it was absolutely fun in the closed beta that I got to test, and honestly, it's kind of come in open beta here uh, in just a day, and I'll be jumping on that. That game I had so much fun, it was in closed beta. It was so thrilling to be able to do that game, though I can see some faults with it, it was closed beta, so it has so much room to improve and to work on, and I'm very excited to be able to share that with everybody. And I've also gotten to play Hunt Showdown, and that was very fun. I played that with Geef, and I, I'm actually looking to play that, and that's also an early access. I think it's open beta, everyone can play it. it it's, it's a fun, interesting game, but um, one's a shooter, the other one is a very great kind of, uh, I would say it's like tactical action RPG, because it, it not, it's not an RPG, but it definitely takes some serious, um, some serious thinking to be able to break all the monster parts that you want before you actually defeat the monster, while also focusing on reading the monster and playing to the monster's weaknesses. So in the end, the June DLC for Dead by Daylight is going to be a very important one, as if it does not balance the game for Dead by Daylight, we will also not be able to uh, see another update for a month and a half. We'll go into another dry spell with the game in the condition that it's in, and that frankly is very unacceptable and I don't think I could deal with that. So. Let me know what you guys think, what do you like about Dead by Daylight, were there games you're looking forward to, and would you like to see any enter this channel? I do intend to make guides for any game I work on. I'm currently still working on the guide for Hag, I don't intend to give up on that just yet, uh, just because I'm getting sick of the game doesn't mean I can't look into the numbers and do some tests, because that's still fun for me. I love learning new things about this game and all the games that I play, and I am always excited to learn new things about the game that I love and hopefully find some way to make the experience better for Killer, but you know, it is what it is. So Hag Guide coming up next. Let me know what you want to see, and thank you all for all the wonderful, great support you guys have given me. I hope to never stop giving you the content you want. Just let me know what you want down below and I'll make it happen. Tomorrow's video, totally up to you. The most requests in the comments down below in one day and I'll uh, make that video tomorrow. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, good game.